Welcome friends from the United Nations headquarters in New York where the first senior level meeting of the Global Partnership for Effective Development Cooperation or GPEDC as it is more commonly known as is being held for the first time on the theme of addressing how we work together for more sustainable development outcomes. Today we are in conversation with and we are really fortunate to have with us Azra Talat Saeed from Roots for Equity and a member of CPDE, that is the CSO Partnership for Development Effectiveness. Welcome, Azra. Uh, Azra, why is the issue of effective development cooperation so important? It is uh, very critical because um, it is part of, there are two parts to it. One is, of course, the financial part. This is how the aid agenda will uh, is critically important for the implementation of the SDGs, which is the goal 17, and it's been emphasized oh, again and again. So that's part of it. S uh, secondly, is the political will to actually come up with the promise of the sustainable development goals. I mean, we have goal 7, we have goal 1 and 2, which are the most critical ones. We have the environmental goal and so on. Nearly everything is in there and they call it a transformative agenda. I'm afraid um, I, I will speak on that more, but those are the two reasons, the political reason and of course the financial reason why CPD and the whole uh, question of uh, uh, cooperative uh, effectiveness is very, very critical. Okay, uh, what is the role of civil society in uh, accelerating the progress at the country level? to attain the sustainable development goals? We have said at, at CPDE, we have always said that the local action and the local activism is, is, the, is the, building, the most critical building block of the entire structure. Why is it important? Because um, human rights are played out at the ground level, at the grassroots level, at the community levels. And if there is no uh, real understanding of the the base of the uh, of CPD or of GPD also is human rights. Civil society has always emphasized that every um, public sector agreement must have at its heart the human rights approach. And it's only the civil society actors who push this. It is the people's organizations, the women's organizations, the farmers' organizations who push for this agenda. There's nobody else, none at all. And so that's why. Um, if we are not there, if our voices are not there, if we are not aware of what is happening at the global level and we bring it down to our governments, it will not happen. Um, Azra, from your long experience of working at grassroots level, uh, what do you think are the main issues at that country or local level that are preventing civil society from contributing to achievement of SDGs in the current situation? I think it is absolute disregard for people's voices. It's absolute disregard for human dignity. I think that is what it is. It is a society which has 1% of very powerful actors, which of which private sector is there, of course, the multinational corporations, the, the, the more uh, the wealthier countries, the countries with a lot of access to weapons, and of course, that is also reflected in the structure of our own countries with the militarized states in which we live, with the anti-democratic uh, positions of our governments, of our elites, of the land belonging to a very small minority of very powerful feudal lords, of patriarchy. I mean, these are, are, are responsible for not, it is the political uh, structure between patriarchy, feudalism, and capitalism in our countries that we are unable to actually push forward. Things are getting worse. In my very long experience, we are now at a very fast accelerated spa pace going backwards rather than going forwards. So these are difficult times for uh, civil society organizations, I think not only in your country, many other countries. As All well. over. Yes. We come, we, we are a sisterhood, a, a uh, a constant get together of activists across the world people who are struggling for attaining genuine democracy for attaining land rights 
for women's rights and so we really meet with each other talk to each other on skype with with this modern technology actually knowing what is happening in india or pakistan or colombia is not very difficult anymore and everywhere there is this story of bloodshed of people who are fighting for the rights the human rights defenders are having a very difficult time there are so many missing people across the globe now for even raising the smallest of voices people get picked up and they are lost to us we don't know where they go so what is the way forward is is the future that gloomy and what sort of support do you think uh, civil society organizations need and uh, to continue with their work for sustainable well i i don't think it is gloomy i think it is it is it is what it is mm. and um, if you look at historical facts we humans have always been able to push forward mm. we have gone from slavery we have gone from being literally shackled bonded labor to what we are today and so to me the future is not gloomy it is a matter of our will power as people to stand up and fight and i think with increased uh, increasing aggression by many many uh, actors uh, the will power of the people is also increasing and we are f- figuring out different methods of how to come together and talk about what is uh, pulling us down which is throwing us into the pits so no i'm not i don't ma- mean to sound gloomy i think i'm just telling you what the facts are uh, you're being realistic and uh, but also very very determined right, to fight right right, right. realistic but determined uh, that's very invigorating always talking to you you know it's a very good experience thank for you. me and thank you very much friends you were listening to azra talat said a member of cpde from the ruler rural constituency thank you very much thank you so much thank you azra Thank you. I hope that worked. Yes, it did. Okay, then, Jana, I will see you. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Eh? Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye.